This is a lark that came out as possibly the best meat dish I've ever made. If you want to get into smoking meat, man, start with a meatloaf. It's just so easy and quick and cheap and not terribly sensitive to temperature details the way that, say, a brisket is. A smoked meatloaf is tough to screw up, and it's so good at absorbing smoky flavor. First thing is to get some charcoal lit. I'll only need about half this chimney starter's worth. The most reliable way of lighting a chimney remains spray some paper towel with grease, light them up, chimney on top. Wait like 15 minutes until most of the pieces are ignited. Inside, I've got three pounds of meat, one pound ground beef, this is chuck, a pound of ground lamb to get those rich, sweet, sheep fat notes that smoke so beautifully, and I've got some hot Italian sausage, plus this meat. Sausage is good for the extra fat it has, plus smoking takes a long time, and we want to keep the loaf moist. That's almost a kilo and a half of meat. It'll feed like eight people easy, especially especially with all the delicious fillers. Because this is gonna cook so long, I can put in my vegetables raw as long as I grate them super thin. That's two big carrots grated. They act as a reinforcing mesh to help hold the loaf together. And here I'm grating one whole onion. Again, nice small pieces so that we can put them in raw. Plus I want all of that onion juice, again, to keep things moist during the long cooking. Three eggs, I usually do one egg per pound of meat. A pound is 454 grams. A lot of whatever herbs herbs and spices you like, but I definitely recommend a healthy dose of garlic powder in something like this. A little sweet and sour is nice. I think Lauren bought this Japanese barbecue sauce for a recipe she did like a year ago. It's basically sugar, soy sauce, and vinegar. Perfect. I'll start with one big pinch of salt. That sauce was also salty. No, not time to mix yet. We need the breadcrumbs. I think about 15 or 20% dry panko by volume is perfect, but reasonable people disagree. The reason I think about such things in terms of volume and not weight is that volume is easier to eyeball. But you can just mix in enough breadcrumbs to get a mixture that will hold its shape. Enough breadcrumbs until it's just stiff enough to be moldable. And for my tastes, I like to mix meatloaf very thoroughly. It's kind of the opposite of how I make meatballs and thick burgers, which I want to crumble apart when I eat them, so I'm careful to not overmix them. Meatloaf, I love to overmix to get a nice homogenous texture with no obvious fault lines in it that will crumble. I like a clean, solid slice. And all the fat and extra moisture in here will keep things soft and moist enough. Pinch off a little ball to microwave for a minute so that we can safely test for seasoning. And I'm glad I didn't put any more salt. That's enough. I think I want a little ketchup. I like that sweetness in a meatloaf and probably the last of those breadcrumbs too. Given how absorbent panko is and how fatty this meat mixture is, it'll be virtually impossible to make a dry meatloaf. The bread will absorb the fat and I want to have enough bread so that this loaf holds together on the grill. I have a whole video in the description about how different amounts and types of bread affect ground meat mixtures. Get this molded into an even loaf for appearances, sure, but more importantly so that it all cooks evenly. If we put this directly on the grill, it would probably sink through the bars, so onto a heat-safe cooling rack instead. Or honestly, you could just put this on a solid sheet pan. Smoke is going to get all around this no matter what. Charcoal is lit. I'll dump it in and I've got some hardwood chunks soaking. The water helps them burn a little slower and provide a more even stream of smoke. I'll push all of that fuel over to one side so that the meatloaf mostly gets indirect heat. Directly over the fire would be too hot. Lid on. Might as well bake slash smoke some potatoes in there. A little oil to help them cook faster. Stab to release steam so they don't explode. And then these I will put directly over the fire. They're going to need it. I can open and close the vents on top to raise and lower ambient temperatures. Open means more oxygen, more combustion, more heat. I want the air temperature in there to be about 230 Fahrenheit 110C, but this is not a brisket, and anything remotely in that neighborhood will be just fine. While I'm out here, I might as well boil my water campfire style. Campfire coffee is the best, especially when you brew it with Trade Coffee, sponsor of this video. Get a free bag with any subscription right now at drinktrade.com slash ragusia. Oh, and Trade does sell pre-ground coffee too, if you're into that. I just like doing things the old-fashioned way sometimes. Trade is a coffee discovery service that constantly combs the United States for the best independent roasts that are available out there from indie roasters. You just tell them basically what kind of coffee you're into and they'll keep a steady stream of new and interesting things suited to your tastes coming right to your door. There we go. That's boiling enough. In we go. And just take it off. 
and just let it steep off the boil, just like a French press, it's basically French press coffee. All right, I'll just give that my normal seven or eight minutes. This roast is from Common Voice, which is a, a roaster that really focuses on sourcing its beans ethically. And we just strain it out. It's all roasted within 48 hours of shipping, which you can really tell the difference, the freshness. Love a lighter roast like that. I mean, brew it in a coffee machine if you're like into that, I guess. Get a free bag with your subscription right now at drinktrade.com slash ragusia. However fast you go through coffee, there's a subscription for you, and you can get a free bag with my link in the description. Drinktrade.com slash ragusia. Thank you, Trade. Let's check that meatloaf. After like an hour, my fire is dying, and I need to move some stuff around anyway, so everybody off. Lift up the grate with tongs and throw in some more fuel. Remember, it's the wood that smokes, not the charcoal, and you shouldn't need any more charcoal unless your ambient temperature is way too low. Meatloaf goes back on, facing the other way, so it cooks evenly, and the potatoes all flip around. Some of them are softer than others. The ones that are still too hard I'll get directly over the fire cover and not quite another hour later i think we're done a brisket takes all day a meatloaf takes two hours max because we don't need to soften the meat it's all ground up remember there's no ketchupy glaze on the surface of that that red color is from nitric oxide in the smoke bonding to the heme proteins in the meat and stopping them from changing color as they cook that's the red of the meat and I can already tell this is cooked inside, too, because of that juice pooling on the surface. Take its temperature, and for a ground meat product, the safe thing is to hit 160 Fahrenheit, 71C. If anything, we've overcooked this, and it won't matter. It's going to be so juicy. It can rest inside for as long as you want. Reheat it if you need to. It'll come out exactly the same. I want some greens with my dinner, so I've got some kale here. Kale cooks faster than collards, usually. I'll just chop it up, throw it into that little pot with a little water, so they stew, some salt and pepper, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna scoop that meatloaf fat in with my greens. The potatoes still are not quite soft enough yet, so while they cook, the greens can cook. Inside, I'll improvise a quick barbecue sauce, that ostensibly Japanese stuff, plus some ketchup, Worcestershire, mustard, I'm just making this up, vinegar, maybe some molasses, stir until smooth and taste. If I'd spent far more time on that, it would probably have tasted just as good, which is to say, it's really quite good. 20 minutes later, my greens are tender, inside with you, also the potatoes. When they're squishably soft, they're good. They took almost three hours in that relatively low heat with which we normally smoke a barbecue. Black on the outside, I would not eat the skin, but the flesh inside is fluffy and sweet. Oh, look at this baby. Slice right on through and look at that beautiful smoke ring around the edge. The slices may look a little dry, but they are not. The panko has simply trapped the moisture inside, where it belongs. A little butter on that spud. The greens actually taste a little smoky too. Too. Honestly, this loaf is so flavorful that you don't need the sauce, so go easy if you use it at all. I love how this feels like a loaf. It's a solid, homogenous mass, but it's very tender once you sink your fork through it. It is smoky as any barbecue you've ever had. That gamey, grassy note of the sheep really shines through in proportion, along with the richness and spice of the sausage. The potato flesh is a little smoky too, but not overwhelmingly so. Really nice. No offense, but that's how I always hope hoped the Boston Market meatloaf would taste, and it never really did. Easily the best meatloaf I've ever had, and possibly the best roast of any kind I've ever made. I was not ready for something that good. It was inspired by the smoked meatloaf that I had at Sweet Peas Barbecue in downtown Knoxville, Tennessee. They only make it on Thursdays, and it usually sells out at lunch, so your next best bet is trying it yourself. Smoke a meatloaf before you try smoking anything else.